old when I first heard about this organization. Um, at the time, I was working at the Crown Heights Mediation Center in Brooklyn as a certified mediator. Um, I started working with that organization because of the riots that was happening in Crown Heights between the Asian Jews and the Caribbean Americans. Um, and my boss at the time asked me to participate in a workshop around gun violence and youth. To be honest, I didn't want to do it. It was going to be boring. Um, but I didn't, obviously I didn't have a choice, so I went. And when I got there, it was a room that looked very much like this, actually. It's not the same color chairs, it's weird. Um, but the room was full, it was packed. And it was a bunch of people there, I was so intimidated. And at first I didn't understand why everybody was like looking at me. Everyone, everyone turned around and was just looking at me. And I just walked down the, um, I guess like the, to, towards the stage and I sat in the front. Um, and the person who had the mic who was standing at the stage asked the question. And she said, why do you think young people pick up guns? And the room was so quiet. And everyone was like looking around. And then some people started answering the question. And we were in that room for about eight hours talking about why young people pick up guns. And when I got home, I was thinking about why did I feel so awkward in that room? And I realized exactly why I felt awkward. No one in that room looked like me. No one in that room was from my community. No one in that room was my age. It was like 11 o'clock on a Wednesday. I graduated when I was 16, so I was able to be home um, of school at 11 o'clock on a Wednesday, but the majority of my friends weren't able to be outside at 11 o'clock on a Wednesday. But you guys are having cool conversations about young people and guns without any young people present. That was weird. So I went back to my uh, job at the time, and I spoke to uh, my program director, and I told her, you know, it was interesting, but I don't really know if they got what they wanted to get out of that conference. I don't really know if the voices that needed to be heard at that time was heard, and she said, well, you know, you should join the organization. And I said, okay. And I did. And 15 years later, we have done some amazing things, and that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. New Yorkers Against Gun Violence is a nonprofit organization that has two parts. They have figured out that the only way to stop gun violence in this country is to talk about the supply side of gun violence and the demand side of gun violence. So we work on legislation and advocacy around laws, but we also work in schools, and in middle schools and high schools, group homes, um, to talk to young people who are disproportionately affected by gun violence every single day on what they can do to stop gun violence in this country. Unfortunately, they are the experts on this issue. When I ask a young person, why do you pick up guns, every single person's hand raise, will raise. If I ask a young person, where can you buy a gun? 75% of my classroom will raise their hand. If I ask a young person, how do you get a library card? Not so much. It's easier to get a library and a car in those communities than, it, I mean, it's easier to get a gun in those communities than it is to get a library car. I've also learned by working with these young people, the closest people to the problem are also the closest people to the solution. And when you give young people a platform to do the work, they do it in an amazing way. about things that are affecting their neighborhoods with conflict in general and gun violence in particular. My name is Takesha Hansen and I am the Assistant Program Director for New York Against Gun Violence Reaction Program. Our 32 lessons one lecture with conversation. Most of our schools are having these conversations already and reaction is providing them structure for them to have these conversations. 
conversation in a positive way. Most of our students have experienced violence and loss of their living. Our program offers them tools to make their lives and their communities safer. If I could describe the reaction program in one word, I think I'd say responsible. It taught me a lot about myself as a young man. It taught me how to take ownership and accountability for things that go on within my community and within my own community. Our students learn debate, research, and conflict resolution skills. By becoming advocates within the school, they influence other students, generating a chain reaction. This positive career pressure creates an understanding that you can have power without having time. Thank you. Um, our reaction program is broken up into four different parts. It's uh, personal development, group development, education, and legislation. We've realized that a lot of times young people who are part of our program don't necessarily understand why they're making the decisions that they're making. They don't necessarily understand who they are yet. And you know, gun violence is usually the last result. Picking up a gun is the end result. It's not, you know, the, the root causes. So we do a lot of work um, trying to get young people to understand the, that, the power that they have um, and the influence that they actually have by doing a lot of a lot of different things. And I just want to give you guys a little bit of a taste of what our personal development and our group development program looks like. How many people in this room have ever played the game Two Truths and a Lie? Some people, right? So basically, you just tell two things that's true about yourself and one thing that's a lie about yourself. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, uh, let's see. I am social media famous. I know we had a social media uh, workshop earlier, so I'm social media famous. Um, I've had 15 fights in high school, and I am a singer. So I want you guys to pick what you think my lie is. <laughs> and before we start, I will say that this is a brave space. I don't believe in safe spaces as a black woman. I don't have any of those. So I encourage people to say things that might, um, you might, that might not necessarily feel comfortable in saying it. That's what my classroom look like. We lead with love. That's our intention. So we don't hurt each other's feelings because we love each other already, right? But we have to encourage each other to talk about hard things. So just to think about those three things that I said, and tell me what you think my lie is, just based off of Lisa's statement. Yes? That you're a singer. That I'm a singer. Why do you think I'm lying about being a singer? I 
appreciate that. So you do a little reverse like, like psychology. 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 Oh yeah, so you should be playing. You should be playing. <laughs> no, but I appreciate that, you know, and, I, and um, so I received that and keep going. Yes. 15 flights in school. Why do you think I did not have 15 flights in school? Exactly. Why would I know the number? Why haven't I kept going? Got it. Since someone else, tell me what you think my lie is. Yes. Said it, you looked up to the sky and turned away from us. Uh, initially, when you were coming up with things to think about, you also turned away from us. Uh, Violent, are you a one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone else before I move on to this? All right. Well, my lie is that um, I'm a singer. That's absolutely my lie. And I play this game a lot in spaces, especially with young people, because they automatically assume that I'm a singer. Automatically. Yes, Miss, you sing. You, you know, you're a black woman. You're heavy set, and you probably sing in the gospel choir. You have a deep voice, like all of these things. And I'm just like, what? You're getting all of that from me? You just met me four minutes ago, um, you know? And they just get all this stuff from me. Or when I say I'm social media famous, they say, what? No, you're not. Two reasons why you can't be social media famous. One of the reasons is this: you don't look like the majority of the women who are social media famous. And that's just honest, because again, this is a brave space. You have to look a certain way. And two, I don't know you, and I know everyone on social media. <laughs> right? And so that's always the thing. And then a lot of times they tell me that you couldn't possibly have 15 fights and be able to do the things that you do. How? Right? Because the young people just think that high school is it, and that's over after that. A lot of times, young people can't see past high school. And a lot of the decisions that they make, they make those decisions based on the fact that they think high school is the end of life. So we have those conversations that definitely talk about assumptions and assuming. Um, we have those conversations that later on lead into conversations about police and police and community relationships because we all make assumptions of each other. And they don't even see how they do it every single day. And in that short amount of time, we're able to show each other how we make assumptions, even, even if it's innocent, right? So we also talk, we do group development. One of the exercises that I actually have people to do during our group development phase is I, I give them three different scenarios, three different people, and I ask them to pick out of those three different people who they would want to be in their high school. I tell them one person is a runaway, a pregnant runaway, would you want this particular person to be in high school? I'll, I'll say the other person has been um, um, known to have autism. Would you want this particular person to be in, in, your, in your high school? So I'll just give you guys two for the sake of time. Which one would you not pick out of those two people? You guys are a lot more sensitive than the kids when we give when we have these conversations we actually give them these scenarios on the board they, they know for sure who they do not want to be in their high school and we go through those things and they talk about why they picked who they picked we don't want the pregnant run away in our high school we don't think that pregnant you know students should be in school they should be in a different kind of school and there's just tons of conversations around that then we took the paper over and we showed them who those people are that they did not people like Oprah Winfrey People like Albert Einstein, right? So we talk about past, uh, we talk about back backgrounds, we talk about um, what you're going through right now, how that can determine who you can be in the future, and how much you act choices that you can actually make, you know? And then we talk about education. I asked this question that, I, that, that was asked to me at 17. Why do young people pick up guns? I'm gonna ask you guys that question. In your opinion, why do you think young people pick up guns? <coughs> yeah, so we have to 
two big P words, power and protection. What else? What other reasons why young people feel oppressed? Curiosity. Absolutely. Street cred. The way you look. Absolutely. We get a rep. We get a rep. Definitely. And in those conversations, we explore these ideals of protection. Does guns really protect you? Right? Does guns really make you safe? We talk about the sense of artificial power, right? Because a lot of times we're talking to a group of young people who feel powerless. And if you can pick up a gun and that gun can make you feel powerful, what happens? You can't just tell me to put it down, you gotta put something in its place. Because feeling powerless is probably the most uncomfortable thing to feel next to hungry, right? So we really explore these misconceptions around gun violence, these misconceptions around power and protection. One thing that our organization has tried, not, tried not, very hard not to do is to give kids and young people answers. We don't tell them guns are bad. We don't tell them you don't need a gun. We don't tell them any of those things. We have real conversations that lead them to their own discovery. One of the other things that we do in our organization is that we give these post, these pre and post surveys. Um, initially, when the young people come into our program, we give them a survey, we ask them a bunch of different questions. One of the questions are, um, do, you, uh, do, you know, do you know anyone who holds a gun? 98% of the young people in our program will put the yes. At the end of the program, we ask them the same question. 98% of the kids will say yes. Our program doesn't change their surroundings. It doesn't change the communities that they come from. We can't do that. I wish we could, but we can't. But what we can do is change their thinking process, the way they feel about power, the way they feel about protection, the way they feel about safety, and most important, the way they feel about advocacy and activism. Lastly, our program is about education and legislation. The young people who participate in our program receive a credit for coming. So a law credit, a health credit, sometimes even an English credit. We have written our curriculum to reflect um, gun violence being a public health issue, so we work very, very closely with teachers and law teachers as well. We have our program is being run right now in seven different high schools around the city. <coughs> and some of the most effective neighborhoods as well. In addition to teaching our uh, curriculum, we actually take our students to Washington, D.C., to Albany, to advocate for legislation that they believe can reduce the amount of gun violence in the communities. These young people come up with this legislation on their own. We come up with that, they come up with their own legislative agenda. They speak to elected officials um, right there on the spot. They also uh, prepare their own press conferences. We take them to Washington, D.C. as well. Through advocacy, we realized that a lot of our students were graduating and they didn't even leave our program. We had to figure out a place for them. For instance, one of my favorite students, Christina Roy, who happens to be looking at me, which I don't know why she's not with her. <laughs> um, she was a student of mine, and we're trying to say that it was so weird. What, 10 years ago? Or um, and was one of was such an amazing student, and definitely I, I thought it was important that we continue to do this work with these young people, because we're cultivating these young people to do these great things, and we just need to provide a platform for them to continue to do this work. And Christine definitely believed that and started an additional program um, from our, right now, our education program. What I wanted to say lastly before I turn it over to Christine to talk about our advocacy work is that the work that these young people are doing is it new? I've been teaching for 10 years, I've been, oh, sorry, more than that, maybe 12 years. So this thing that we're doing right now is it new. However, people haven't been paying attention to it. These black and brown kids from these inner communities have been advocating and fighting to reduce gun violence in their communities forever. However, it doesn't make the news. People don't pay attention. And I have, sometimes I have very angry students who don't necessarily understand why no one cares about the work that they're doing. So what we thought would be a great idea was to continue to give them that platform to be able to speak on the same stages as the kids from Watch My Lives.
with their community. So, thank you, Shayna. Let's give a round of applause to Shayna. Um, because she is a dope, dope educator, um, also an amazing mentor to me. Um, and now I have the privilege from being a student and now being the director of community outreach for New Yorkers Against Gun Violence. So they gave me opportunity to speak about um, the issues in my community. And if you guys noticed in the video, um, I hate that video, by the way. I don't know if y'all understand how much I hate that video. Because that was me 10 years ago. Um, and I spoke so passionately because I was tired um, being in the same room as the NRA. And the NRA basically saying, you have no idea how uh, the Second Amendment works. You have no idea, um, actually not no idea, but you want to take away our guns. That's like the number one thing, which like really irritates my soul. And I'm just like, no, that is not the case. Like, I see mass shootings every day in Brooklyn. So people don't understand that we see people constantly dying every single day. And that happens in black and brown communities. Um, so fast forward, here I am, a grown adult, <laughs> also educating young folks and mentoring young folks. And I had this amazing young kid. His name is Ramon Contreras. He actually, uh, First of all, he called the, the phone from New Yorkers Against Gun Violence and was like, listen, I want to make this initiative. I'm doing this march called Youth Over Guns, and I need your help. And I was like, OK, we're going to go to let's have a meeting. And the first meeting that we had, he said something that was so powerful to me, which was, I'm tired of black and brown young folks not being in top of the platform when this is occurring to them every day. It was the same feeling that I had 10 years ago. And I made it a point to say, we're going to make something happen. So I cultivated every gun violence prevention group in New York, um, had him take over the room. I introduced them. That was it. I was like, here you go. Um, and they created a Youth Over Guns Brooklyn Bridge March. I don't know if anybody knows the Brooklyn Bridge March um, that just happened this past June. But it was him and a couple of other young folks from the Reaction Program, which is, which was why it's so special to me. Because besides teaching Reaction students, we're here also mentoring other students that was not a part of the Reaction Program. Um, so Youth Over Guns has joined forces with us recently. Um, to raise awareness about gun violence that impacts communities of color. Um, so we can empower the youth advocate for living safety policies and program. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of video of Ramon Contreras speaking um, on why he wants to lead this march. When the tragedy in Parkland happened, you know, it was heartbreaking. Every school shooting is heartbreaking. People dying by gun violence is heartbreaking. It also made me angry how fast, you know, white students were able to go through extension in all this. And this is an issue that has been affecting our black and brown communities for years now. And what Youth Over Guns wanted to do was bring more awareness to gun violence in our communities. And we did that by taking 10,000 people and marching across the Brooklyn Bridge, holding a casket to symbolize the deaths in our community. I think what America needs to do is just look at the, the system of oppression that's affecting the black and brown youth every day and really take a look at the unfairness and the racism and the systematic oppression in this country and really try to do something to fix it and really start investing into the places where we need the money. This is a you know, it's, it's just putting a child in a school where one of the things that's really important um, for us is understanding why certain platforms or certain movements move is that the majority of the students that are in communities that are disproportionately affected by gun violence aren't necessarily trained on how to advocate for the things that they believe in. They just aren't. 
And so for us, it's really important that we make sure that we give the tools to young people um, who live in communities that are disproportionately affected by gun violence to talk about what's happening in their communities. We have to make sure that we are, um, we have preventative measures. We're not just reactive. When things happen, we can't start then. We have to work now so that our young people are able to express themselves, our young people are able to advocate, our young people are able to show up in spaces that they belong in um, and demand space and demand people see them and hear them. Um, so I think that that's one of the reasons why our program has been so successful. I'm honestly trying to work myself out of a job. I did not want to do this when I was a young person. This is not my dream. I wanted to be a fashion blogger. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and I, I don't want to wake up every single day and try to teach young people how to stop gun violence. Who wants to, like, that's not the case. But it's necessary. Um, and I've also learned that young people, you know, are always, you know, the front, in the forefront of every single movement. And if we give them the tools that they need, the tools that are necessary, it can work. Yes, and one of the, you know, having those tools, right, um, which is why, like, having Youth Over Guns Brooklyn Bridge March, if you guys ever take the time, um, please look at the video and look at it. I mean, they actually cultivated other young people to make a statement that it's not just about the end result, because people always attack the end result. It's actually the root causes that affect gun violence, right? And a lot of people don't ever want to address those root causes. Um, and they wanted to make sure and appoint it that they can make an actual difference by using those tools. So guys, I just want to make sure that I leave time for any questions that are specific to the curriculum, that are specific to the work that we do, um, that might just be, you know, we also, besides actually teaching the reaction program, um, we actually do workshops as well around you know misconceptions of gun violence around public speaking how to become an advocate who represents you we do a tons of different things so if you guys have any questions please feel free Awesome, so our program right now is started off as an after school program. Um, I met Christine through an after school program at the High School Public Service, and obviously, if something's an after school program, that is, um, it's not necessarily mandatory. People can pick to choose to be in that program. Even when it was that way, it was the largest program in the school, it had about 50 students, and we had to bring our after school program to the auditorium. Right? So that's number one. Number two, now it's a for credit mandatory program like health, like gym would be, like, like, like law would be, like science would be, like math would be. Um, we've sat down with principals um, and actually had to show how important this program was, but not just talking, but actually showing some survey results. Um, Christine has worked in, give me that blue screen. IS80, and they did a ton of research around the program that we actually run in that particular school, and it showed that our the students who were participating in our program, um, the truancy level went down, um, the test scores went up. So it was we were able to show that being a part of our program is actually not only changing you know the mindsets around guns and safety, but it's also promoting a better student quality of life. So that's what, we're, that's what we really wanted to do as well. So right now, we are offering our program in different ways. We are offering our program as a summer program, we're all, our summer intensives for summer school. We're offering our program as an after school program. We're offering our, offering our program as a day school, four credit, mandatory program as well. Yeah, and just to add, we, we are a part of the DOE. We're vendors of the DOE system. So we actually have a curriculum that's structured for the DOE um, in New York City. 
Um, how was your program marketed around, well, the five boroughs and then maybe even like Long Island? How do you promote yourselves? Well, we, uh, we got to do a better job at doing that. I, I, would, I would definitely agree. We are a very small organization. I think that people see the organization for a while and they think that we have a 35 um, staff uh, nonprofit organization and we don't. Um, what we're doing right now, we're just aligning ourselves with non, um, you know, gun, gun violence prevention organizations that already exist. We've been around for a very long time, but we've noticed that people really gravi gravitate towards us because of word of mouth. We go into spaces and we run our program. We do a lot of trainings with the crisis management system. We've been around for a very long time providing services. So we are what's coming from like a best kept secret <laughs> um, in, the, in, in the gun violence prevention world. People tend to um, call on us to teach gun violence prevention with, to young students and also train violence interrupters um, on this type of curriculum. We are working with mothers as well, mothers who lost their children to gun violence and families who lost their children to gun violence. We talk about grief and advocacy. So we, ha we are trying very hard to do a better job using social media, um, using um, creating short videos and things like that. But you know, we can we could always use some help if we have some ideas. <laughs> yeah, and also, the, she's being a little modest too, is like the young folks too are the ones who really talk about the program because they're not, and we provide the tools and they're out there actually doing the work. So if it wasn't really for the young folks, you know, they're like our secret weapon as well. Yeah, actually, so once a month, um, I have a great pleasure of working with one of the high schools because they're very active. Um, we're part of the MTA meetings once a month and a lot of the parents, PTA meetings, thank you. I don't know what I just said. Um, but being a part of the PTA meetings once a month, we do give them a workshop and we give them pretty much of the information, well for me, I give them information of what they've learned, their students have been learning, especially around the time when report cards are coming around. Because it's kind of like, we're, we are a part of their report card, so they're like, so what is this for their learning? Um, but we give them like a rundown of what's going on, what they're teaching, and then we kind of like bring them on to events as well, because a lot of the schools are very active. They've been able to do like campaign projects, um, art campaign projects, uh, telling their stories that you know are very powerful, and, and I don't know if you guys ever heard of the National School Walkout that that happened. Um, parents were eager to you know what was like the strategy plans because um, they knew their child was going to be involved. Um, so parents are usually involved through, uh, through the PTA. So it's like once a month. And again, and again we also host the workshops as well. So we uh, make sure that the school knows that we have the workshops prepared. Um, a lot of times around. They do um, offer a one of our workshops to the parents um, in the school. But we, we definitely are trying to come out with more strategic ways to involve parents in the conversation as well. Great question. Where, where in Brooklyn are you guys based? So, right now, you are in High School Public Service, which is in Crown Heights. Um, we also are running some program out of Boys and Girls High School. Um, and that's that. Um, we have programming in the Bronx, um, at Gun Hill Gun Road. We also have programming in Jamaica High School and at John Bounds in um, Queens. We are also in City Eyes and Leadership High School, which is in the financial district next to the Wall Street Center. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for participating. <laughs> You know, because when we talk about education, I asked him this question that, I, that, that was asked to me at 17. Why do young people pick up guns? I'm gonna ask you guys that question. In your opinion, why do you think young people pick up guns? <coughs> Good question. 
Yeah, so we have the two big P words, power and protection. What else? What other reasons why young people feel guns? Curiosity. Absolutely. Street cred. The way you look. Absolutely. You get a rap. Definitely. And in those conversations, we explore these ideals of protection. Does guns really protect you? Right? Does guns really make you safe? We talk about the sense of artificial power, right? Because a lot of times we're talking to a group of young people who feel powerless. And if you can pick up a gun and that gun can make you feel powerful, what happens? You can't just tell me to put it down, you gotta put something in its place. Because feeling powerless is probably the most uncomfortable thing to feel next to hunger, right? So we really explore these misconceptions around gun violence, these misconceptions around power and protection. One thing that our organization has tried not, tried not very hard not to do is to give kids, young people, answers. We don't tell them guns are bad. We don't tell them you don't need to go. We don't tell them any of those things. We have real conversations that lead them to their own discovery. One of the other things that we do in our organization is that we give these post, pre and post surveys. Um, initially, when the young people come into our program, we give them a survey, we ask them a bunch of different questions. One of the questions are, um, do, you, um, do, you know, do you know anyone who owns a gun? 98% of the young people in our program will put the yes. At the end of the program, we ask them the same question. 98% of the kids will say yes. Our program doesn't change their surroundings. It doesn't change the community that they come from. We can't do that. I wish we could, but we can't. But what we can do is change their thinking process, the way they feel about power, the way they feel about protection, the way they feel about safety, and most important, the way they feel about advocacy and activism. Lastly, our program is about education and legislation. The young people who participate in our program receive a credit for coming. So a law credit, a health credit, sometimes even an English credit. We have written our curriculum to reflect um, gun violence being a public health issue, so we work very, very closely with teachers and law teachers as well. We have our program is being run right now in seven different high schools around the city. <coughs> and some of the most effective neighborhoods as well. In addition to teaching our uh, curriculum, we actually take our students to Washington, D.C., to Albany, to advocate for legislation that they believe can reduce the amount of gun violence in the communities. These young people come up with this legislation on their own. We come up with that, they come up with their own legislative agenda. They speak to elected officials um, right there on the spot. They also uh, prepare their own press conferences. We take them to Washington, D.C. as well. Through advocacy, we realized that a lot of our students were graduating and they didn't want to leave our program. We had to figure out a place for them. For instance, one of my favorite students, Christina Brown, who happens to be looking at me with her green eyes right now, I don't know why she's doing that. <laughs> um, she was a student of mine, and we're trying to say that, it was so weird. What, 10 years ago? More than that. Um, and was one of them was such an amazing student, and definitely I, I thought it was important that we continue to do this work with these young people, because we're cultivating these young people to do these great things, and we just need to provide a platform for them to continue to do this work. And Christine definitely believed that and started an additional program um, from our, right now, our education program. What I wanted to say lastly before I turn it over to Christine to talk about our advocacy work, is that the work that these young people are doing is it new? I've been teaching for 10 years, I've been, I'm sorry, more than that, maybe 12 years. So this thing that we, we're doing right now is it new. However, people haven't been paying attention to it. These black and brown kids from these inner cities communities have been advocating and fighting to reduce gun violence in their communities forever. However, it doesn't make the news. People don't pay attention. And I have, sometimes I have very angry students who don't necessarily understand why no one cares about the work that they're doing. So what we thought would be a great idea was to continue to give them that platform to be able to speak on the same stages as my kids from Watch My Eyes.
with their community. So thank you, Shayna. Let's give a round of applause to Shayna. Um, because she is a dope, dope educator, um, also an amazing mentor to me. Um, and now I have the privilege from being a student and not being the director of community outreach for New Yorkers Against Gun Violence. So they gave me opportunity to speak about um, the issues in my community. And if you guys noticed in the video, um, I hate that video, by the way. I don't know if y'all understand how much I hate that video. Because that was me 10 years ago. Um, and I spoke so passionately because I was tired um, being in the same room as the NRA. And the NRA basically saying, you have no idea how uh, the Second Amendment works. You have no idea, um, actually not no idea, but you want to take away our guns. That's like the number one thing, which like really irritates my soul. And I'm just like, no, that is not the case. Like, I see mass shootings every day in Brooklyn. So people don't understand that we see people constantly dying every single day. And that happens in black and brown communities. Um, so fast forward, here I am, a grown adult, <laughs> also educating young folks and mentoring young folks. And I had this amazing young kid. His name is Ramon Contreras. He actually, uh, First of all, he called the, the phone for New Yorkers Against Gun Violence and was like, listen, I want to make this initiative. I'm doing this march called Youth Over Guns, and I need your help. And I was like, OK, we're going to go to, let's have a meeting. And the first meeting that we had, he said something that was so powerful to me, which was, I'm tired of black and brown young folks not being in top of the platform when this is occurring to them every day. It was the same feeling that I had 10 years ago. And I made it appointed to say, we're going to make something happen. So I cultivated every gun violence prevention group in New York, um, had him take over the room. I introduced them. That was it. I was like, here you go. Um, and they created a Youth Over Guns Brooklyn Bridge March. I don't know if anybody knows the Brooklyn Bridge March. Um, that just happened this past June. But it was him and a couple of other young folks from the Reaction Program, which is, which was why it's so special to me. Because besides teaching Reaction students, we're here also mentoring other students that was not a part of the Reaction Program. Um, so Youth Over Guns has joined forces with us recently um, to raise awareness about gun violence that impacts communities of color. Um, so we can empower the youth advocate for living, saving policies and programs. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of video of Ramon Contreras speaking um, on why he wants to lead this march. When the tragedy in Parkland happened, you know, it was heartbreaking. Every institution was heartbreaking. People dying from gun violence was heartbreaking. It also made me angry how fast, you know, white students were able to get the attention around this. And this is an issue that has been affecting our black and brown communities for years now. And what Youth Over Guns wanted to do was bring more awareness to gun violence in our communities. And we did that by taking 10,000 people and marching across the Brooklyn Bridge, holding a casket to symbolize the deaths in our community. I think what America needs to do is just look at the, the system of oppression that's affecting the black and brown youth every day and really take a look at the unfairness and the racism and the systematic oppression in this country and really try to do something to fix it and really start investing into the places where we need the money. The school is been part by, you know, it's, it's just putting in a child in a school where one of the things that's really important um, for us in understanding why certain platforms or certain movements move is that the majority of the students that are in communities that are disproportionately affected by gun violence aren't necessarily trained on how to advocate for the things that they believe in. They just aren't. 
And so for us, it's really important that we make sure that we give the tools to young people um, who live in communities that are disproportionately affected by gun violence to talk about what's happening in their community. We have to make sure that we are, um, we have preventative measures. We're not just reactive. When things happen, we can't start then. We have to work now so that our young people are able to express themselves, our young people are able to advocate, our young people are able to show up in spaces that they belong in um, and demand space and demand people see them and hear them. Um, so I think that that's one of the reasons why our program has been so successful. I'm honestly trying to work myself out of a job. I did not want to do this when I was a young person. This is not my dream. I wanted to be a fashion blogger. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and I, I don't want to wake up every single day and try to teach young people how to stop gun violence. Who wants to, like, that's not the thing. But it's necessary. Um, and I've also learned that young people, you know, are always, you know, the front, in the forefront of every single movement. And if we give them the tools that they need, the tools that are necessary, it can work. Yes, and one of the, you know, having those tools, right, um, which is why, like, having Youth Lower Guns Brooklyn Bridge March, if you guys ever take the time, um, please look at the video and look at it. I mean, they actually cultivated other young people to make a statement that it's not just about the end result, because people always attack the end result, it's actually the root causes that affect gun violence, right? And a lot of people don't ever want to address those root causes. Um, and they wanted to make sure and appoint it that they can make an actual difference by using those tools. So I, I just want to make sure that I leave time for any questions that are specific to the curriculum, that are specific to the work that we do, um, that might just be, you know, we also, besides actually teaching the reaction program, um, we actually do workshops as well around, you know, misconceptions of gun violence, around public speaking, how to become an advocate, who represents you. We do a ton of different things. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free. Uh, how was your program marketed around, well, the five boroughs and then maybe even like Long Island? How do you promote yourselves? Well, we, uh, we gotta do a better job at doing that. I, I, would, I would definitely agree. You know, if there is an organization, I think that people see New Yorkers against gun violence and think that we have a 35 um, staff uh, nonprofit organization and we don't. Um, what we're doing right now, we're just aligning ourselves with non, um, you know, gun, gun violence prevention organizations that already exist. We've been around for a very long time, but we've noticed that people really gravitate towards us because of word of mouth. We go into spaces and we run our programs and we do a lot of training to provide the management system. We've been around for a very long time providing services. So we are what's called for like a best kept secret <laughs> um, in, the, in, in the gun violence prevention world. People tend to um, call on us to teach gun violence prevention with, to young students and also train violence interrupters um, on this type of curriculum. We are working with mothers as well, mothers who lost their children to gun violence and families who lost their children to gun violence to talk about grief and advocacy. So we are trying very hard to do a better job using social media, um, using, um, creating short videos and things like that. But you know, we can, we can always use some help if we have some ideas. <laughs> yeah, and also, the, she's being a little modest too, is like the young folks too are the ones who really talk about the program because they're not, and we provide the tools and they're out there actually doing the work. So if it wasn't really for the young folks, you know, they're like our secret weapon as well. Where, where in Brooklyn are you guys based? So right now you are in High School Public Service, which is in Crown Heights. Um, we also are running some program out of Boys and Girls High School. Um, and that's that. Um, we have programming in the Bronx, um, at Gun Hill Gun Road. We also have programming in Jamaica High School and at John Bounds in um, Queens. We are also in City Eyes and Davis High School, which is in the financial district next to the Wall Street Center. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for participating.